Well, uh, young Guoling, you know, six-year-old ruler of Chitri Kumpa, yeah. He sits on a little miniature ornate throne in the main residence. You know? And I have fun tossing a large rubber a ball with him, like an exercise ball. Uh, and uh, boy, does he ever like his red tricycle. A gift to him left by the incorrigible incorrugated uh, Russian-American Dharma seeker named Zina Rajevsky. What's that, Earthy? We need more sex in the story? Zina. Uh, international socialite in Eris. Yeah, um, rich kid, huh? <laughs> At 22, she's uh, in all the papers as the flame of Marlon Brando in Paris. Hello. Last Tango in Paris. Marlon Brando with Zena on the side. Uh, however, when she, you know, got to be 33, she became fascinated with theosophy. Theosophy? Madame Blavatsky? Shimla? Hill Stations? Himalayas. Uh, so in 1965, she traveled to India mm -hmm. and uh, she stormed the ramparts of Tibetan Buddhism. Whether they were ready or not, yeah, she, uh, she showed up at Gum Monastery in Darjeeling, the monastery where they uh, told me, take a hike. They didn't say it to her, though, uh, because, uh, well, Bhagavan Das led her uh, to this situation, like he led Ram Das to his guru, named Karoli Baba. Yeah, uh, Bhagavan Das, famous Kirtan player, and like me, he landed in Europe and made it to India with just $40 in his pocket and a guitar. Yeah. Um, so in... Um, she shows up at Gum Monastery and insists that the two young lamas there, Tibetan refugee lamas, uh, Lama Zopa and Lama uh, Yeshe, uh, teach her Tibetan Buddhism. And she rents a house there, a fancy house, uh, Villa Altamont. And every day for nine months, she receives, absorbs uh, the real behind the veil Tibetan Buddhism, Vajrayana, from these two young lamas. And... Uh, Wow, are they intrigued by her, by her persistence, sincerity, and huge white female Caucasian body? Yeah. And, uh, you know, Tibetans. Wily survivors, and of course, they enjoyed her largesse. You know, throw a few rupees around, some Tibetan refugee monks. You can sneak off to that barley beer tent when nobody's looking. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, Zena took her vows uh, and became a Buddhist monk in 1968, way early days, a year before myself. And about the time that uh, Robert Thurman also became a monk. Uh, famous uh, translator of Tibetan works, Robert Thurman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I really have to thank Zena uh, for warming up the greater Tibetan community around Darjeeling. Uh, that, you know, there's going to be freaked out Western Dharma seekers wanting the real real Jews are coming into town and insisting on uh, instructions. Yeah. Uh, and this is what made Dorothy's acid-fueled dramatic appearance uh, like, uh, oops, here comes another Xena. Pretty sexy, huh? Xena? Oh, well, <clears throat> Dukche, 
Rinpoche instructs me in classical Buddhism, but apparently uh, I'm not a good student. Yeah. Uh, why? Uh, well, yet I, I observe his basic ground rule to always be honest with him and others. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, well, what's going on here? Tuxe is instructing me to visualize the wrathful deities, and these are horrible images to imprint. You know, I mean, uh, you know, they hold like skulls of blood, and the necklaces are uh, little skulls, and they're prancing on the corpses of, he looks like Shiva. Don't do that to Shiva. Blood dripping everywhere, holding a half skull of dripping blood. Look it, I'm on the run from the Vietnam War. Don't force my face back into that stuff. Flaming skulls, demon prancing on corpses. Well, <clears throat> took a size, yeah, and he tells me, go to your sleeping place. And a sit quietly. No farts or burps. Don't throw stuff at the other monks. And oh no, he sees my flute. And wow, I never saw him frown so much. Why? Because he says that's going to distract from my instructions on Buddhism, playing the flute. I don't lie to him. I just keep my mouth shut. I wander off into the deep woods to do that. Yeah, I love my bamboo flute. Oh, uh, you know, I'm wondering. You know, I, I expect to be here for ten years. That this is my snow cave. So I asked Tuche if I could like help out, maybe work in the kitchen, and he says, "Ask me again." in a year. Hmm. Well, what's that got to say? Keep the memoir short and pertinent. Skip the stuff about the day in the life of being a 21-year-old uh, uh, hippie in a monastery in the Himalayas in 19... Skip the whole thing and get what? Get down to what? The visions themselves. The meditations themselves uh, that cause me to experience you. You're coming up. You are the star of this book, Goddess Earthy. You're coming up soon. This National Geographic adventure travel thing. <laughs> we'll go way beyond that. All right. Um, yeah, straight to the meditations, huh? The visions. I had experimented with meditation in my cave in the Greek islands. Yeah, and reading Evans Wentz books. I mean, that's all we had. We had three books on Buddhism, you know, uh, in the 60s. And uh, we had to do as best we could with those. So I, 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 I put it all together. Tuxe gave me some tips and this, that, and the other thing. Look, it's not all that complicated. Basically, one sits in full lotus and keeps one's spine straight. You know, you can do that when you're young, huh? When you get old, <laughs> lucky to half lotus. And, uh, and the tip of the tongue, what happens to that? You put that where your upper teeth meet the, the, the roof of your mouth, the palate of your mouth. Yeah, put, put it right there. Mouth slightly open, and that's about it. Uh, meditation. A lot of it has to do with like stopping the normal basic mind from looping and looping and looping over and over again. How do you do that? Well, they have what they call the stomp the mind by an elephant into dust method. Or uh, let the mind trickle along like a little, little creek at the very bottom of your mind. Kind of like that 
stuff on CNN, uh, World News. They have this little ribbon at the bottom. Yeah, let the ribbon go. Just don't give it any juice, huh? Well, me, what do I do? Yeah. I'm old-fashioned. I just uh, use my mind to block my mind out of my mind. Uh, old-fashioned approach, you yeah. um, I think I've always been a mystic because, like, as a teenager, just for fun, I would stare intently at something, huh? And um, see how long I could not think about anything and even the name of the object I'm staring at. Pretty easy for me. Fortunately, this is coming in handy right now, okay? It's still a childhood games, mind games, huh? Coming in handy now. Uh, naturally gifted. And not thinking. Like right now. Duh. No, it starts to think something. Why well, spoil it? By being all smarty pants upstairs in the head? No, don't spoil it. Just like as soon as you start to... Duh. Duh. Relax, because when the mind is quiet, the spirit becomes a wild energy. <laughs>